The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus proposed another parable to the crowds, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a man who sowed good seed in his field. While everyone was asleep, his enemy came and sowed weeds all through the wheat and then went off. When the crop grew, and bore fruit, the weeds appeared as well. The slaves of the householder came to him and said, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where have the weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. His slaves said to him, do you want us to go and pull them up? He replied, No. If you pull up the weeds, you might uproot the wheat along with them. Let them grow together until harvest. Then at harvest time, I will say to the harvesters, First collect the weeds and tie them in bundles for burning, but gather the wheat into my barn. He proposed another parable to them. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that a person took and sowed in a field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, yet when full, grown it is the largest of plants it becomes a large bush and the birds of the sky come and dwell in its branches he spoke to them another parable the kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed with three measures of wheat flour until the whole batch was leavened all these things Jesus spoke to the crowds in parables. He spoke to them only in parables to fulfill what had been said through the prophet. I will open my mouth in parables. I will announce what has laid hidden from the foundation of the world. Then dismissing the crowds, he went into the house. Now his disciples approached him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He said in reply, He who sows good seed is the son of men. The field is the world. The good seed, the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one. And the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the, harvester, and the harvesters are angels. Just as weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all who cause others to sin and all evildoers. They will throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Whoever has ears ought to hear the gospel of the Lord. I took my mask off for this part, the homily.
I hope that all of you feel blessed this morning with this great opportunity to be gathered together at Holy Mass. It is the only county, Lake County, in our whole diocese that is still able to have Mass. So we are very blessed. And I, I hope that each of you feels the privilege and the blessing of being here this morning together, nourished by the Word of God and Holy Communion. It is a great blessing. God is our loving Father, the Bible tells us, and we are God's children. But those of you who are parents know that parenthood is a mystery. You do your best to raise your children, and you know that a good parent can never give up on their child, ever, no matter what. If your child, and I know parents who have children who are drug addicts or out in the world, and they never give up, ever. And those who do not have kids say, oh, you just let him go. That's because you, you're, you don't have kids. You don't understand. If you have a child, you never give up. And I know some of you are probably saying, well, what do you know about that? Well, there's a reason you all call me father, because you're all my children, spiritually speaking, of course. That's why every single day, the first thing I do is I thank God for all of the sheep that God sends me, all the sheep, and the goats as well, and <laughs> that's the way it is in life, isn't it? We have to thank God for every single person in our life, not just the convenient, but the inconvenient as well. This is not just true of parenting, but of the people you love like your spouse, your true friends, your co-workers. A true mentor teacher never gives up. God never gives up on you either. The world under the influence of the devil tempts you to give up on people. But God wants you to be patient, to never give up. Ever. Because God never gives up on you. In the economy of God's salvation, your troublemaker child at the end might be the one who will end up to be your caregiver, wiping your behind. Not the, not the one you think is, has it all together. They might throw you in a nursing home or some other place and never visit you but the one that the the one so-called you know the uh, the worldly one might be the one that's how the economy of God's salvation works that the apparent failure becomes the actual blessing so this is the dynamic in today's gospel reading. When Jesus describes how the kingdom of God works, where Jesus is telling us that God is very patient, which we are not. We are not patient with one another. What's your number one issue in your marriage and with your kids? 
and in your life. It's your patience. You get so irritated. God is patient with us. God provides the blessing of His presence and His grace. God has prepared the soil and planted the good seed, but we don't always turn out right. That is, we don't always turn out right, right away. As God intends for us to turn out, it takes time. It's in God's time. It's like that with the people in your life. It's because we make selfish choices, worldly choices. We give in to anger. We get distracted. We are jealous and envious and judgmental people. We don't forgive. We think we know it all. We have no humility. We are full of pride. We fall into temptation of dividing ourselves into us versus them. We don't listen. We don't pray. We don't read our Bible. Through our carelessness, even though the seed is planted, the weeds begin to grow. But if you listen carefully today, the parable is clearly about God's divine patience. God doesn't celebrate our failures, our sins, our bad behavior, but the parable makes it clear that God never gives up on us no matter what. Because God knows that we, His children, can change. You can change. And as long as the possibility of change exists in us, God will never give up. God always will wait for us to change. For He has begun the good work in us and will carry it to completion, as the Bible says. We can turn back to God who is patient, loving and forgiving. So, all of you who are so worried about all the people in your life, especially your children, who may even say they don't believe in God. In this life, it is not so much about us believing in God all the time, because you know how it is in life. It's all about always remembering that God believes in us all the time. All the time. God always believes in us and will believe in us, even though we, throughout our life, give up believing in so many ways from time to time in God. So in the parable, the owner of the field refuses to give up. It's the servants. Notice it says slaves. Did you see that? That's really servant. The, the word here is the word for servant. What do, the servant uh, what do the servants say? They say, pull up. His servants said to him, do you want us to go and pull them up? The weeds, that is. And what did God reply? No, if you pull up the weeds, you might uproot the wheat along with them. Let them grow together. Huh? See, that's how we are. We are the servants, isn't that? You know, we are the servants, the Bible says. And we, we go on judging who's, we, who's a weed and who's wheat. God doesn't work that way. We, we love, especially uh, in church, we... We like to say who can go to communion and who can't, right? You know, who's right with God and who isn't. You know, who should be here, who shouldn't be here. Uh, I will never forget one young man that I talked to. He was in his uh, late 20s already when I spoke to him. And he came to church once and he says, this is the first time I've been in church for, I think he said, over 12 years. And the reason why I stopped going to church is I was a teenager, he says, and I was part of the choir in church. 
And, you know, people go through all sorts of identity changes and all sorts of things, you know, they go through. People have, there's crises that happen, particularly in today's day and age with teenagers. And so he showed up to the choir and he showed up dressed like a lady, like a woman. And the priest went up to him and said, you can't be here. Out. And threw him out of the church. A teenager. And he says he never came back to church for 12 years. You can't be here. You don't belong here. We've done that so much. As a, as a church to all sorts of people. We like to point out who's in and, and who's out, who's a weed and who's a weak. That's why the servants, even 2,000 years ago, they started doing this, and we, we have continued doing this to this very day. To this very day. No, says God, don't pull up the weeds. They are good for the wheat. Now, my father, who's visiting me right now, and he's at home, he's going to come to the Mass in Spanish. He says, you know, I don't really get the English, and I don't get the Spanish, so I, let me sleep in, you know. So <laughs> I said, okay. Uh, and he explained to me that it is often the case where the wheat needs the weeds to protect it from being scorched by sun and other types of nutrients and minerals that flow from the weeds. Being around weeds is good for the wheat. There is a reason why Jesus says you are to live in the world but not be of the world. You can live around weeds but not become consumed by them or turn into them. You can coexist. If the weeds were bad for the wheat, then in the great act of creation, God would not have created the weeds to grow along with the wheat. In fact, the type of weed described here in this gospel passage in Latin, remember the Vulgate was translated, the, uh, the original Greek into Latin, and the Latin word here is lolium perenne, which is commonly called rye grass in English. This type of weed, and I've done my research because I, okay, this type of weed that Jesus describes here was widely used and is even used to this very day to fertilize the soil and is the main ingredient in the vast majority of pasture seed mixes. It is of utmost importance to the life of the wheat. It looks almost identical to the wheat. You have to be an expert farmer to tell the two apart. So the wheat during those times needed the weed. It needed its fertilizing capability. You get it? All those problems in your life, the apparent problems, the problematic people in your life, you know, the people who you think are so bad in your life, the jealous and envious people in your life, the suffering and the sickness and the disease and all that you have had to go through and put up with, especially with your family, is not a bad thing. It's a good thing. There is a purpose to it, like this pandemic has a purpose in, the, in our life. For example, it has had a uh, very poignant purpose in the life of my father, who would not be here right now visiting me if it wasn't for the pandemic. He would have not taken this time. But he's here because, because of this pandemic, he retired. He turned 65 on May 18th, but he hasn't been working since March. And as he says, 
he would not have stopped working and would not have retired if it wasn't for the pandemic. But then he revealed to me right now during this visit, he says, the doctor told me because he was operated on for something. I won't get too much into it because I know none of you really are curious people or gossiping people. And I know that if I tell you that it won't leave here, I mean, I'm almost positive that that won't happen. But to make a long story short, uh, he was operated on for something. And the doctor said, if you continue working, doing what you're doing, because he was, he was a delivery truck driver for 27 years for the same company in Chicago. And he had to lift a lot of things. He had to wear a belt in order to do it. And the doctor says, if you, if you continue working and doing what you're doing, your problem that you had fixed will come back. And maybe we will not be able to fix it again. And he says, I was determined to continue working because I didn't know what else to do. And plus, you know, I've taken like a 70% cut in, in, in income because all he gets is social security and all that. Uh, but the pandemic came and I lost my job. And boom. And I'm making it. And it's okay. And it will be fine. And I wouldn't have been, I wouldn't be here right now. Not only that, you know that I was going to have my 10th anniversary party in Poland in April. You all remember that? Okay. Well, my father was supposed to be working. And as he said to me, he says, he said, I will not be going to your anniversary in Poland because I'm working. And now he says, since he's visiting, he says, now I have all this time. When you reschedule your celebration, your pilgrimage in Poland, I will be there. Huh? Do you see? Huh? Let me give you one more example. Remember my experience in the hospital when I had those flea bites? Well, as a result of that visit and those flea bites, I discovered that I had, they did tests, I discovered that I have l r low red blood cells and low hemoglobins something I would have never known if it wasn't for the seemingly bad experience. Now you're all getting it? I hope you do. That God has a purpose for everything. God has a plan for everything. Let me quote scripture. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Hmm? Where's your trust in God in the midst of living among weeds or what you think are weeds? The owner of the field knows that wheat and weeds grow together in the same field. And at the end, he is the only one who separates them, not the servants, not you. You are a servant that is not supposed to be about separating weed and wheats. You are supposed to coexist. The Bible says, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. Judgment is reserved to who alone? God. To decide who is bad and who is good is the Lord's work, not ours. So stop calling people weeds and all the stuff around you weeds as well. Because you are not an expert farmer and you cannot tell the difference with your limited capability of knowing of which is the wheat and which is the weed. That's not your job. So, to summarize, what are we to be like according to Jesus? Seeds and wheat are the sons and daughters of the kingdom of God. Seed in the Bible is the word of God. Look at Luke chapter 8 verse 11 when this same parable is explained in the gospel of Luke. This is uh, uh, the gospel of Matthew. And actually this is the only place where the disciples ask Jesus to explain something. Remember how they said... Uh, 
his disciples approached him and, and they said to him, explain to us the parable. Other, in other parts, they, they seem to have gotten it. So, the seed in the Bible is the Word of God. So, the Word of God is to be made real, present, felt through you. You are to be the living Word of God in the world. In the Gospel of Luke chapter 8 verse 11, the Bible clearly says that the seed is the Word of God. So it is not your job to judge the world or to get rid of the weeds. Your role, our role, is to be seed. The living seed, living Word of God. And how do you do this? Through your words. You are to be the living Word. The Word became flesh, the Bible says, and dwelled among us through your positive words, building up words, gestures, because actions speak louder than words, through the way you carry yourself, through your manners, your kindness, your patience. All of this is about patience, isn't it? Huh? You are called to be the incarnate Word of God. So, my message today is stop trying to change people. Change yourself. Look in the mirror. Be the change you want to see around you. Stop trying to ask, as we famously always hear, you know, what your country can do for you, but ask what you can do for your country. So the same thing applies in your family and in your marriage. Stop trying to ask what your spouse can do for you. Ask what you can do for your spouse or for your children or your co-workers or your church or our community. God has a plan for removing weeds and it's in His time, not on your time. So, take it easy. Don't worry yourself about other people being weeds. Stop noticing the splinter in your brother's eye and miss, and while you're missing the big beam that you have in your own. Apparent failures turn out to be the path, the road, the pathway to great blessings. Apparent heartbreaks turn out to be pathways to healing. Apparent struggles turn out to be the greatest gifts. And the people are supposed to be the wrong kind of people. The weeds at the end will turn out to be the wheat, the ones who love us the most. So if you find yourself with weed in you or around you or in the people around you, have hope. God is not done with you, and God is not done with those around you either. As long as we have breath, God is still working on us, and in us, and through us. Until He brings us home.